started off with empty cupboards. The last administration left us nothing. We started off with bad, broken tests and obsolete tests. What we've come up with between the Abbott laboratories, we have the five minutes. Did yeah. they test you today? They did test me. For, Good. Uh, I'm now I feel better. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm negative. You did the you did the five minute the I Abbott did the, test. The, the quick turnaround. It's so great. I feel like a new man. That's a brand. You know what? That's a brand new test. That didn't exist eight yeah. weeks ago, yeah. and now it's like the rage. Everybody wants that test. Uh, no, I think we've done. I think we've done a really great job. But the Obama administration, people from the Obama administration, would disagree on your assessment that the cupboards were bare. They, they said well, that there well, was equipment. Yeah, in I know, Jim. Let, let me just file. say, I that's right. You say broken test. It's a new virus. So how could the test be broken? We had a broken a test, Jim. We had broken tests. We had tests that were obsolete. We had tests that didn't take care of people. But here's what's very important. If you take a look at the swine flu, H1N1, or as Joe Biden would say N1H1, but it's actually wrong. He didn't even know the name. Okay, H1N1, the swine flu. The Obama administration was a disaster. And they did polling on how did they do. And their polls were so negative, so bad. They did a very poor job. And they did a poor job on a lot of things. They did a poor job on our military. They did a poor job on our ammunition. When I got here, we had no ammunition. Just like we had no ammunition, we had very little medical to so I think when you ask, how did we do? And I have to say it because the news is so fake and so corrupt. Uh, I think we did a spectacular job. I'm not even referring to me. I'm referring to all of these people, including your people who have been working with my you people bet. so closely. Finally, Trump was called out for his constant, constant claim that he inherited broken tests from an administration that hasn't been in office for nearly four years for a virus that did not exist until only a few months ago. So even if Obama did create a coronavirus test, chances are that it probably wouldn't work too well considering he didn't know what he'd be creating the test for. And it's telling that Trump's response is, and I quote, we had broken tests, we had tests that were obsolete, we had tests that didn't take care of people. What with the fact that none of those sentences actually means anything. I don't know who needs to hear this, but you cannot inherit obsolete tests from a previous administration for a virus that came into existence several years after they were out of office. What this is, is just a smattering of meaningless words falling out of Trump's mouth intended to blame Obama. But when he's forced to actually elaborate, well, clearly he can't. Instead, Trump pivots back to the Obama administration's handling of H1N1, where Trump claims that he did a poor job. Only under Obama, the US had 12,469 H1N1 deaths during the entire year from April 2009 to April 2010. In only eight weeks, the US has had over 61,000 deaths from coronavirus. And expanding on that, the United States has about 62,000 coronavirus deaths, while the world has 231,000. That means that the US has 27% of the world's coronavirus deaths. But under Obama, the US had 12,469 H1N1 deaths, while the world had between 151,000 and 575,000, meaning the US had between 2% and 8% of the world's H1N1 deaths. So if Trump thinks that the administration that had five times less deaths and as low as 2% of the world's deaths versus 27% is poor, then I'd love to know on what planet Trump thinks he's actually done a better job. Trump then claims that there was polling on the Obama administration's handling of H1N1, which is a strange thing for Trump to bring up considering there was polling on Obama's handling of H1N1 and it far exceeds Trump's polling on coronavirus. In 2009, Gallup held two polls, the average of which showed that 67% of respondents were very confident or somewhat confident in the federal government ability to handle the H1N1 outbreak. But for Trump, according to 538's aggregate of all polls since March, only 43% of Americans trust him at least somewhat to handle the coronavirus, while 53% only trust him a little bit or not at all. In other words, and I hope you're sitting down for this, Trump was lying. The truth is that this is just an excuse to cover for the fact that the Trump administration has dropped the ball with regard to testing. And so rather than own the fact that he's the president of the United States and he's responsible for what happens, Trump would rather just blame Obama for coronavirus because it's easier and just hope that no one realizes that Obama hasn't been president for almost four years. In reality, experts have been saying for weeks that the United States needs to be testing 500,000 to 700,000 people per day, more than three times 
times what we're doing right now. But since day one of the outbreak, Trump hasn't worked to ramp up our testing infrastructure, focusing instead on patting himself on the back for months for enacting a half-baked travel ban all the way back in January that still managed to let 40,000 people enter the US from China, and then just hawking miracle cures like hydroxychloroquine and injecting disinfectant. He even undermined his own contingency plan of social distancing by fomenting riots across the country by tweeting out commands to liberate the states, which will only put pressure on governors to reopen states too early, which would unquestionably facilitate a new wave of the virus. In other words, not only was Trump not doing what needs to be done to create a national testing infrastructure, but he's actually exacerbating the problem with his inability to control himself and his partisan impulses. And so because Trump never bothered to put in the time and do the hard work of making sure we had adequate testing in this country, we're left in a position where it's April and still American citizens can't get their hands on a test for a virus that began spreading here in January. And while the blame certainly lies with the president, contrary to what Trump says, it is not the one who left office back in 2017.